Hey guys, welcome to another Varia Randomizer of uh, Super Metroid. This time we're playing as 80 swimsuit Justin Bailey Sama, sort of. It's not exactly Justin Bailey, but that was the, I guess, source that this was derived from by some user that I can't pronounce the name. I don't know. I don't want to butcher it. But yeah, let's do it. This is a true randomizer. This is not a plando this time. Again, with a downward shot sprite. Ah, I see. Now we got a red swimsuit as one red hot woman. Yeah. No, I don't know. But yeah, we're starting in Bubble Mountain this time. I did pick that because you always do. So now this forces us to have to do a non high jump to Bubble Mountain. Climb like this. Crap, what happened? I thought. Oh. Okay, well, let's just try again. I like the sprite though. Those legs, son. No, I'm just kidding. Imagine. Kind of reminds me of like... I don't know, it just looks weird. Maybe because it's 16-bit. Come on now, what's going on? You gotta be so quick on that jump button. I'll get it, it just... I was so close, you saw me, I was like right there at the top. There we go. There it is, don't... Okay. Okay. Different colored enemies this time. Yellow energy, that looks... Nice. Uh, for a second I was concerned about the heat protection, but... So now the question is, where's Morph Ball? It better be up here. I like this. I like this very much. What I've come to find in playing these, I guess now, three seeds, including this one that I've done recently... I really like not having high jump and being forced to get fancy with the wall jumps and power bombs I can't use because where's Morph Ball unless it's in here. That is not a Morph Ball, but it is a missile. Would you like to shoot it? Red Samus. I like it, but it kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, almost like a Sailor Moon type thing. And I don't even watch Sailor Moon. But, uh, the Bare Naked Ladies talk about him in that One Week song. Got the boom anime babes or whatever, however the line goes. Whoa. Get out of here, little dude. Actually, you know what? The missiles might be a problem. I need to farm for missiles before going in there because the wave beam door also has... Look at that crouch. Oh, yeah. No, I was kidding. We might have to go back to the farming hatchery thing, whatever it's called. What is this room called? I'm still learning all the rooms that speedrunners have dubbed these things, but I think not every room has a name, does it? Like that one part of Lower North Air is every time I go to the website and read about the tricks and stuff, it just talks about the Ridley Zone. And I think that refers to like every room after Fire Fleas or Fireflies, whatever it is. There we go, we got the five missiles, just in case. Wave beam, I'm concerned. Actually, wait a minute. Without grapple, and without wave beam, and without morph ball, this has to be morph ball. Because there's no way out of here. If you fall down, you need wave beam to open this from the back side. That's super missiles, that's still not helpful. So we can't go that way out. If you fall down there, you need Morph Ball to get out. This has to be Morph Ball. Unless there's a- yeah, it is. Okay, good. Actually, I'm curious about the Morph Ball sprite for this. You know, I wikipedia the Justin Bailey thing. Ah, it's just regular Samus. Red Morph Ball. That looks actually kind of neat. But yeah, there's not much... It's almost like they never figured out what exactly or who exactly Justin Bailey is. Like, it's all speculation. But all that's known, really, is it's just that famous password that starts you out with Max Missiles on the NES. And in Norfair with Ridley and Kraid defeated. And basically every item except for Ice Beam. And then there's just been cameos. I'm also almost dead already from that. This guy always drops big energy, usually. That or super missiles. Actually, speaking of... 
Without high jump or speed booster, is it possible to sequence break this? Oh, come on, get out of here. Actually, you could probably damage boost off of that guy. Actually, I know you could. I know that's a technique, but I think you gotta jump from where the cactus guy was. And I'm already down here, so... Uh, get out of here so I can... There we go. I'm just gonna try this a little bit, but I'm not gonna waste too much time doing this. Nah, I think I need a little bit of extra boost that high jump would give me. Yeah, it's so close though. Let's save, just because the fumbling in the beginning trying to climb Bubble Mountain. So now, we have more fall power bombs. We have everything, dude. We can start exploring. We're not hindered by anything except for maybe... No. Just wanted to try one more time. Yeah, Wave Beam is probably the only thing. Well, and the suits, gravity just suit. But yeah, that's the thing. We have Varia already, too. So, like, all of this. I like starting in Norfair. Norfair has always felt cozy to me. Wait a second. I don't have Speed Booster or Wave Beam. This room is pointless. Gotta watch those power bombs now. Come on, buddy, be a friend. We gotta go up. Which means backtracking through that lava room. This is- I like going through this room backwards. Haven't done this since I was a kid. And didn't know where things were. Let's time it. Jump button did not work. This controller is increasingly getting on my nerves. But I'm not about to replace it. It's still better than playing with the GameCube controller though, just because the D-pad is crazy. And I like the A, B, X, Y layout of the Super Nintendo when playing games like this. It's that weird thing where your brain reverts to a certain thing. Eat this, pal, if the buttons would work. There we go. Now, what is the missile tank down here? Energy tank, I will take it. Nice. Actually better off than we were now. Now there's another trick coming up, but it's not really necessary. I don't know why you would ever need to do it. Well, actually I do. If you didn't have Morph Ball, that's the answer. Uh, it's right at the end of this room. You can reverse climb to the entrance door on this side if you don't have Morph Ball. You gotta take care of that enemy, shoot up through the floor, and then delay wall jump to get up to that blue door. But I should be able to... yes. Now I need to use a bomb, which could be a problem. We have two left. So, also, another thing here, there's area randomization as well. This is the first seed that I've played truly don't know where the doors lead to. So, this might be the most challenging seed in that regard that I've played yet. Because any area, random area randomization that I've done was a plandomizer. But this is not. This is whatever it decided to generate on its own. Energy tank is good. You know that Contra seed that I played? They said that it has sensitive material that's not suitable for advertisers or something. Like, what the heck? I don't know if it's just because the guy has a gun or whatever. I tried to manually review it, but I have a feeling it's not going to do anything. That's always a pain when that happens. Especially when, like, you're hoping for it to do something. Or get you by. Pay a bill. No, I don't know. Now, I could mock ball, but I'm bad at that ice beam mock ball for some reason. So let's go up here and see. Both the left and right side of here are gonna be random transitions. So we'll, yeah, let's try the left first, see what this is. Uh, is this Meridia again? No, it's Red Brinstar. Wait a minute. This is a good place to be. Three pickups. Right here. Look out, okay. Now the missile counts are worrying me. Don't want to use a power bomb because it destroys the floor. Not yet, anyway. There we go. That's a thing, too. Ammo counts. That helps. Wall jump without high jump to get out of there. That's interesting. Crap, come on, controller. 
Seriously, the button is sticking every time I press it. Okay. It's still pliable, manageable. This section of Red Brinstar, though, it's almost- maybe it is just my skill level. We'll see when I- this room down here. This is the room that notoriously every time I record, I'm like, I'm so bad at this, and, you know, I feel like I say the same thing every time. I gotta make a save state and just practice this room a hundred times until I don't fumble it. Damage boost? Nope. See? <laughs> I don't know what's- uh, I don't know. I like this green, though. Jeez, not even the boosts are working anymore. Plasma? Now it really looks like a sci-fi laser gun. It's kind of weird. Well, actually, that is a thing to say. Seriously? I do that every time. I try- I slightly tap left, thinking I'm gonna overshoot that block. There we go. Damage boost. I do that, like, 90% of the time, I damage boost into that thing. I gotta practice that room, man. But I think I'm gonna step away from Super Metroid after this seed. I really want to record Zero Mission, but I gotta say I'm not too excited about that game. I watched a walkthrough recently, and... I don't know. I remember once in the past I tried getting into Zero Mission, and it just... There's something about it. It's good, I can see that it's good. But even the original Metroid, I find it very hard to go back to that. I used to watch... Well, I guess that if I do cover Zero Mission, that would be a great time to talk about it. But I guess I'll mention it here. That was the first video game I think I ever saw, was the original Metroid. Where does this dump to? The moat. Uh... If I check what this item is, I can't get back here. I'm curious though. Space jump! Wait, they edited this. It's not a bomb, right? Yes. I can grab that, right? I don't need gravity or grapple. I don't have shine spark, but I can still get a running start. I want it, dudes. That would change everything. It completely negates the need for high jump at all. The only reason high jump would be important then is in spring ball mode, wherever that is. Uh, so go for the best. Yeah, got it! Nice. Jeez. Talk about getting dizzy. Flips of any kind is something I've never been able to do. I remember back when people had trampolines in their backyard and stuff. I mean, they still do, but I mean, when I was growing up, going over people's houses, everybody was all about doing stunts on the trampoline. And I could never do them. I remember somebody jumped and I bounced. I went flying because I'm light as a feather. And I fell off of the trampoline. I remember somebody's parents were concerned that I got hurt or something. But I was fine. I think the worst injury I ever had as a kid was something I did to myself by accident. And it's the dumbest story ever, so stupid. But, I mean, I brought it up, so now I gotta finish it. Um... My childhood dog... Ah, oh, I thought maybe I lined it up perfect. I used to get him all excited because he loved going outside, as dogs do. And so I'd be like, you want to go outside? And he'd get all excited and run to the door. And one time I was just like, hyping it up and being excited with him. And we bolted out the door together and I had this patio. And whenever he got really excited, he would skip all the steps. He would just jump off of them and go straight to the grass, all happy. And I jumped with him and we jumped at the same time. And my foot got caught under his belly. And I flipped the dog with my foot and simultaneously landed on my back and smashed my hip on the concrete. And he was crying and stuff. I just heard these dog whimpers. Power bones, okay. And like, I, I literally couldn't stand up because the impact of hitting the concrete was so much that like it, it kind of like paralyzed me for a second. This is gonna destroy him, plasma. Yeah. Yeah, I was genuinely scared for him, and I remember I was calling out for my sister to come outside. 
because her bedroom window was right there, like near where I fell. So I was yelling for her to come outside because I thought I hurt the dog, and then I couldn't stand up. And then eventually I stood up and I was limping like crazy and my dog was hobbling. And then we were fine, but... No, still can't even do that with Space Jump. The Alcatraz Escape. I, I want to say I did pull it off once in my life, but I could be imagining things. But we'll check down here. Another time I hurt myself at home, I had a pull-up bar in my bedroom doorway, and one time... Gravity suit? Wait, what color is that? Why didn't it change? What is Gravity Solo? It's blue, but together they're red? But that was Varia's color. No, it is blue. I guess it just didn't apply yet. That's neat. So we had purple, red, and blue. Uh, this time I think I made sure that the coloration did not affect Samus. So like, even though I, all the enemies and stuff are different colors, Samus is her vanilla color. With this sprite, so purple, red, and blue. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the chin-up bar thing, pull-up bar. I would always jump up and grab it, and every time I did that, it would slightly loosen from its grips on the wall. And I guess I never adjusted it, and one time I jumped up, grabbed it, it ripped down out of the door, and I landed on my tailbone. That hurt, too. And back when I required a babysitter, or at least, I don't know if it was ever required, I think by law it maybe is, but... My parents would be out and they would get a babysitter. And in those days... Super missiles. I would constantly whack my head off of doorknobs by accident, not like on purpose. But I think I was just the proper height. I was like doorknob level. So I'd always be running around and smashing my head off of stuff. Getting supers. We actually could clean out this whole room. Thanks to Space Jump. Speaking of red hot screw attack. Oh, that's a thing I didn't finish yet. I almost said it and I don't know how I got distracted, but I did. Um, actually screw attack can break this, I think. Yes, it can. Did I get it? Yeah. You could do that without gravity or high jump or speed booster. You can make that invisible shot. Nice pickups. We're getting boss ready, I like it. But to finish the thing before I forget again, um... I did set the progression of items as fast. So I think that's why I have Space Jump and Screw Attack and both suits already. And Plasma Beam. Because I think altering that, um... What would you call it? Setting? That's not the word. Parameter is what I was looking for. There you go. I did that because I didn't want the seat to be taken forever. And because it is an area randomizer. Um, that alone is going to increase the time. Speaking of, the Green Hill Zone exit right here. Let's we'll see what this is. Because, yeah, once again, if you're unfamiliar, area randomization in this thing, it's not every single door. It's literally area that, like, I think I did a horrible job explaining it in my last video. It was, like, way too much. Hang on, what is this? Ridley. I could do the gravity jump, but why would I go to lower north air with the status of my items right now? It's tempting, but... See, that's the thing, though. The missiles just before Gold Terezo could be something amazing. Then again, I have Space Jump, Screw Attack, and Plasma, and both suits. What more do I really need? There are some things, but for the most part, it's just ammo at this point and energy. And then we're boss ready. Because the, the biggest thing here that's frightening me, there's also boss randomization. So whatever boss door I uncover first 
if that happens to be Ridley, I guess that would be the hardest thing, right? Dragon would be tough, but I think I got better at fighting him even without grapple and without gravity suit even. You just need the ammo counts. Fantoon, I would say Ridley's probably the hardest, then Fantoon. If you ever encounter Fantoon early, that's a scary thing. And Kraid, no matter the situation, you could have no energy tanks and Kraid's still a joke. So really, that's... With area and boss randomization, the biggest threat is how soon are you going to see Ridley and Fantoon? But uh, the randomization thing, to better explain it, it's literally every area. So an area in this game would be Criteria, Upper North Air, Brinstar, Meridia, Rex Ship. Did I forget something? Lower North Air. Those are your areas. And so when you think about each of those areas, think of what doors transition to that area. Whether it be an entrance or an exit. Like, for example, we know to... Well, this is going to be something different. Meridia. I could do it. But... Speed booster is a thing. That's the thing, without speed booster and grapple... Actually, I have space jump and screw attack. Never mind, I could do Meridia. But speed booster is my next thing. Uh, actually, you know what? This is good. We're right back in Upper North Fair. We can go to that green door that I was trying to get to earlier. There's that, too, but I don't have wave beam yet. Uh, but yeah, for example, these are two different- or they're gonna be the same, as always, because this is still the area of Upper Norfair. But yeah, they- they bundle that Ridley's headroom, they consider that Lower Norfair, that's why that was considered an exit. This room, man! This is just a nostalgic room. Straight out of the NES game. I remember I always liked it for that. The glowing tiles and stuff. Uh, that's a thought I never finished too. I used to... That was the first game I ever saw in my life. I think it was like three years old. Maybe four. I don't know. But I remember explicitly watching my dad play the original Metroid. And even that game scared me back in the day. Because it's got creepy music. But that goes back to what I was getting at with Zero Mission. Something about the original Metroid and Zero Mission, even though it added the map feature. Something about the design of it. I find it very hard to find my way around. And I watched a 100% playthrough of Zero Mission, and I was like, what the heck? Alright. Ammo counts are good. 45 and 20. Still no charge beam, though. That's the problem. This is why ammo is extremely important right now. Mostly for Ridley. Also Dragon, though. Fantoon is not a problem because he tends to fill your missiles as you damage him. And Kraid, too, so... Yeah, the ammo is essential for Ridley and Dragon, mostly. Until charge is found. Uh, I still don't have Wave Beam or Speed Booster. Down here... Well, hang on. Then I have to go the long way, which is doable. Wait a minute, are these... Let's get some more stuff, power bombs, hopefully, because... Can you power bomb the speed booster blocks? Are they speed booster blocks, is my question. I think they would be, right? That's why they destroy instantly. But I want to test something. God, how many years has it been since I came in this room without speed booster? I just gotta see. No, they're definitely- okay. Sorry, I had a moment of forgetfulness. So we gotta go the long way back again. Yeah, wait a minute. Why am I going this way? <laughs> Sorry. This area randomization, man, it throws you for a loop. You gotta think about what you have and how you can get through stuff. We're speaking of that, I don't know if I ever finished. We know that Lower North Air, for example, only has two doors that transition to it. The Ridley's Head Elevator and 
the exit. On the way other side of it. Those are the only two things. So therefore, they're the only two doors that could potentially transition to somewhere that the vanilla, vanilla game does not. I added an extra syllable to vanilla there. Vanilla. Let's go the road that I was talking about in the very beginning. Way easier with space jump. So now, ice beam. Still have to mock ball to do it though. Uh, we can open the door. I don't know, I really don't feel confident with it. I want to try it, but at the same time I know I'm recording and that's gonna like tack on 15 minutes trying to get it. It shouldn't, but that's just my confidence in my skill level, ability, whatever. Uh, did we, we didn't see what this was, did we? This is an area transition. Green Hills, wait, this is, oh man, this is beautiful. We can get every single item in Brinstar. Surely after this, whatever we may find, even if it's just missiles and super missiles, we're ready for any boss. Although I could use some more energy tanks for Ridley. But this is plenty of energy for every single boss except for maybe Ridley. So already that this is not really that difficult. It's just a matter of learning these door transitions. Speaking of, let's go down here. Wait a minute. This is speed booster. Although I, ha I have to test it. Can you power bomb it? I love this song, man. Why hasn't it ever been remixed in any other Metroid game? No. Thought maybe screw attack could damage it. Because that's pretty powerful, too. Has Green Brinstar ever been remixed? Properly by Nintendo, I mean. I don't think it has. But then again, I haven't played Samus Returns. That's... If I had to pick any Metroid game that I would definitely want to play, it's definitely Samus Returns, but it's on the 3DS, which is terrible. Because only important people can record the 3DS. Because you have to send it away and pay for all that thing to capture the footage. Crap. See what I mean? Remember I told you the next time I would forget to? I thought you had to make sure it was off screen and then scroll it forward. No, I thought I saw it shake. But what I've come to find, at least emulating it like this... Nah. I didn't make a save state. There it is, okay. But see how close I was to the wall? I think I could have sworn that you had to make sure the wall was off screen and then as soon as you fire the missile, quickly move forward so that it comes on screen and that would ensure that simultaneously the missile block would spawn as the missile hits it. Wave beam! How perfect is that? We can check the room right above this. But yeah, from like every seat, it's like you gotta stand right by the wall, which I could have sworn was not how you do the trick, but I don't know. Now I need super missiles, though. That's the problem. After that failure. Ah, I feel like I've done it again. I've brought up like 500 things and haven't finished a single one. I just remember I said, speaking of red hot, meaning to go talk about the red hot chili peppers. And then never t t did. I don't know, I've just been listening to them. Excited that John Trishante's back. But I watched an interview with Josh Klinghoffer, and he actually did seem kind of... ...slightly upset that he's not part of the band anymore. Like, understanding, but still, I mean, I guess it would be. I didn't realize that he was with them for 10 years already. Time flies, man. Actually, what ended up happening is I attempted to start this yesterday. Energy tank, hey, that's helpful. But yeah, speaking of red hot and burning, I had really bad heartburn. I don't know, I have a real problem anymore lately. And what's weird is I think sometimes antacids cause the heartburn to be worse. But I think I made the mistake, I bought these chewy ones that they literally taste like candy. And that leads me to believe they probably have sorbitol in them. 
however you say that ingredient. And I have this weird sneaking suspicion that that might be the ingredient and in many things that's causing such severe reactions in me. Then again, I also think it might be bread. Because I had bagels. That's all I ate yesterday was I had two bagels and all day long I had terrible heartburn and just could not stop burping. And I took everything. I even bought these like $30 pills that are supposed to improve digestion or something. I got ripped off! Now I was supposed to go get all that stuff checked out like over a year ago. And uh... The cost was ridiculous. Even with insurance, so I never did it. I never went and got the operation done. I got a few other things done. I got like a barium swallow, but that ended up being normal. Anyway, why are we talking about digestion? Just collecting ammo, apparently, which is good. I really think at this point, anything goes. I could take on Ridley like this. It's really just charge beam, that's the biggest thing. Everything else is just... It's nice to have, but not necessary. Charge beam, then probably high jump. Oh, speed booster. Speed booster first, actually, then charge beam. That's how I would rank it, although... Ice! That's gonna slow everything down, but I do love that purple. Or would it be pink? It's like a hot pink. Takes me back to the 90s. What doesn't, though? But that's what I was getting at. Instead of recording this, I attempted to, but then the heartburn was too bad. So instead, I went on, like, this big music thing. I just listened to music and burped my way to death. And so it was a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers and other 90s type stuff. And it, it went from, like, 90s to early 2000s is what I was listening to. I started getting real nostalgic as I do. Speed Booster! Yeah! Now anything goes. Can I do it? Yeah, I love doing that, the smooth morph. And this was X-ray scope out here, which I don't even want to pick it up, to be honest with you. Yeah, that hot pink is something else. I've never seen that before. I don't know. Look at it. Asking to be picked up, but nobody actually cares. Even though I, I do know you could kill Dragon with it. With, it's like, I think they call it microwaving Dragon. It's a speed kill thing you could do in addition to the grapple and the shine spark method. Alright, what is this? This is an area transition. The Golden Four. Wow, this is where we gotta come at the end of all things. That's a trick. That's rich. <laughs> I think of interviews with Norm MacDonald. Guy cracks me up the way he just delivers stuff so randomly. Pretty much like dad jokes, but I actually kind of like dad jokes. Maybe because it reminds me of various dads that existed in my childhood. Because that's the thing, right? Whenever you went over a friend's house, they usually had a hilarious dad. I don't know what that's all about, but there is truth in it. Dads are usually funny for some reason. I think it's just the male, like, I don't give a crap thing that, like, most guys, after a certain amount of time on this earth... I got speed boost, I can do this. I don't know, it's just, like, your patience for nonsense. I'm turning off ice, because... It's just gonna slow everything down for me. We only need it for Torian, really. Missiles. I'll take them. That's for the Zebatites. And without Charge Beam, I definitely need everything I can get. What is the Shine Spark animation for this bikini babe? Yeah, it's kind of the same. That did not sound right. Bikini babe. Oh, words like that. Yeah, like some people, like couples and stuff, they're like, hey babe, hey hon. It's all those like cutesy pet names. Some people can say them and it's just, you don't think twice, it's all right. Bob Dylan. But... Other people say it and it just sounds forced and not right. That's how I feel like words like that come out of my mouth. It's like there's an awkward pause, even if it's instant. 
there's an awkwardness to it. Like, hey, babe. <laughs> I don't know. Meridia! Gravity jump! We don't need to do it. I have screw attack. There we go. And then once again, because of the layout patches, this green gate is gone. So yeah, let's just do Meridia. Whatever boss it may be at the end of this, we're doing it. Nice! Energy attack! That's just like the last seed. But I didn't put it there. Yeah. This is definitely enough for even Ridley, I think. It's nice to have the music going again. It's too quiet, the last seed. I know I edited in that Contra music, but... I mean, that's cool too, but it's not the same. Still bummed out by that, though. Come on, YouTube. I actually did get an approval. Some of, one of my Banjo-Kazooie videos was seen not suitable for advertisers. But I requested a review, and I did get an email from that one saying, Oh yeah, it is suitable, because we're stupid. I don't know. Nice green turtles. I always feel weird talking about that, though. Gaming videos that are literally just playing the video game and you go on about ads on it. There's a lot of stuff I want to get back to doing. More creative stuff. I want to write again. So I can't tell you how much I miss being in college slash university, depending on where you live. Yeah! That shoulder, that perfect angle shoulder. I don't know, those four hour night classes where all we would do is sit with other writers and read their stories and edit and critique it. I don't know, I, I guess I'm an English nerd or something. I don't mind it. I, I actually just learned, I was looking up words. And I learned of a Welsh word that I really like. I don't know how to properly pronounce it. Hiraith, I think? Except that's too English and stupid. It has no direct translation to English, though. It's purely Welsh, which means you have to say it. As if you're from Wales, even if you're not. A reserve tank? I forgot they existed. That'd be something. Make a seed where the only energy tanks you have are the four reserve tanks. The idea is just never stop with this game, I'm telling you. I'm very curious to see, like, ten years from now, what developments will this game will have had. Like, what new randomizer-type things. Yeah, the Metroid games, here I go, one tangent to another, never finishing a thought. Like a rambling old man. Do we do one of the sand pits? I guess we could do one, right? But to do both. By God, that would be... A headache. The straight knee, Jesus! I want to be Chun Li. Remember the Street Fighter movie? I barely remember it. Maybe that's for the best. I remember the Mortal Kombat movie, if not for the song, and like the one obscure scene with Scorpion. Because of course, as a kid, you're like, I can't wait to see Scorpion, and then like you can't really tell what's going on in that scene, at least from what I remember. And human smoke. Those are my two Mortal Kombat characters. Yeah, dude, look at the energy now. There's no... There's no question. There's nothing for it, Mr. Frodo. Crap. That's sand every time. Well, I guess I'll see you back in the main room. Because this takes nine-fourths. Okay, not going in the other sand pit.
to Dragon or Batwoon or well it's gonna be Batwoon and then I actually hope it is somebody tough. Well it Fantoon even is a joke. Like Ridley is the only one that's a challenge right now. That's the problem with these things. It quickly becomes too easy. Actually, though, as I say that, without charge beam, every bullet must count here. Well, not necessarily every one. I would have already butchered it by now. I think it has to be said, look at the cheeks on Samus when she's just standing idle. Don't think I didn't notice. Those 16-bit cheeks. I am the ass man. <laughs> Kramer. <laughs> nice. That wasn't so bad. I actually like to see. I like being challenged. I'm so used to having charge beam. You don't think twice about the ammo, and now... I'm way... It's not even tight at all, there's no concern. But I like to think that there is reserve tank. Do we go for the thingy? No, we need to quit playing with your dinghy. We need to... Charge up. Because this might be Ridley, and if it is... I need more missiles. The reserve tanks will be nice, too. What is it with swimsuits from the 80s? That V that rides all the way up. It, can't, it doesn't seem comfortable. You look at those old, like, workout DVDs and stuff, you just see what they're wearing on the cover, and you're like, dear lord. You give yourself a wedgie. <laughs> I don't know, it just, it doesn't look right. Or like that scene at the end of Dumb and Dumber, the one bikini model that comes out on the bus, and it's like, we're a bit lost. That type of swimsuit, I don't know. Power bombs. That's more than enough. Can you only have 50 in the vanilla game? Whatever. Who do we get? Watch me crate. It's Ridley! Yes! Alright, I will gladly take it. This is nice. I like this. It's an actual fight for once. Sort of. It's actually still way too easy. Then again, if it was too hard, I'd be like, oh, it's too hard. Yeah, I probably wouldn't complain about it. One would hope. I'm loving the green, though. The brownish green yellow. One of my favorite color combos. Depending on what it is, of course, because those colors can sometimes be other things. And that's never a pretty sight. What do you know about that sci-fi laser gun, Ridley? Right on the toes. Oh, wow. How did he die? Did he just self-combust, or did I shoot a missile? I didn't even know if I shot him. I mean, I wasted all my supers, but it was easy. Well, there you go. It's smooth sailing from here. That was the hardest possible thing that could have happened, and it happened, and we're past it. It's like passing your driver's test. There's another tangent for you. When I went to get my driver's license, having done the practice driving and everything with the other two, Bob Place, man, slow down lots. Yeah. No, that's the thing. In school, sophomore year of high school, we had to take the driver's education class. We passed that. Then you have to go... 
with, for the permissions license or whatever? Per, whatever, the permit, yes. And that, you have to drive around with some dude that's willing to drive you around in their special student driver car. I remember that. And I had this guy, Bob Place. And that was his phrase, he'd be like, slow down lots. <laughs> I remember one time I was driving around some rural road, and there was a tunnel, a very brief little rural area tunnel, that went around a really sharp bend, and it said, slow down lots, like the sign literally said, slow down. Maximum speed limit, 25 miles an hour, or something like that. And, uh... He's like, I hope you saw that sign, and I wasn't slowing down, he's like, I HOPE YOU SAW THAT SIGN! And then, I did slow down, and I realized, going around that bend, if you didn't slow down, you'd go straight into a river. So, he must have probably... nearly crapped his pants. It was alright. But the actual driver's test after that... I had another stupid moment speaking of- from- what, what a- what a surprise. The kid who flipped his dog while simultaneously jumping off the patio with him. Surely, what other moronic things could happen in his lifetime? But yes, I did the driving test, no problem. Everything went smooth. Didn't mess up a single thing. And then at the very end, we pulled back up by the place, and you had to park the car. But I pulled up, still with my foot on the brake, waiting for his next instruction. And he said, secure the vehicle. And I was like, what? My foot's on the brake. <laughs> And he meant put it in park, and secure the parking brake, too. And I was just sitting there like, what? I don't understand. I didn't say I don't understand, but I, I was just awkwardly silent. And I did say what, and he's like, secure the vehicle! Getting like, increasingly more angry about it. Like, why are you a moron? And then he's like, put it in park! And then I put it in park, and he was like, ugh. And marked something on his clipboard, and I passed. But you could tell he was pissed off. Probably just, he was probably the last moronic teenager that he had the patience for. Well, you gotta explain these things. You can't just say, secure the vehicle. Just say, put it in park, and then I'll know exactly what you're saying. It's all about vernacular. Whatever. I'm never, I've never been a confident driver, though. Even less so these days. Which seems counterintuitive. Given that I've been doing it longer. This is an instance where not having spring ball or... Regular bombs, by the way, where the heck are they? And high jump. But we did it. So now, we have not seen the wrecked ship. Where the heck is that? Criteria we covered, although if we go back there, we can get the super missiles up the shaft, at least. I think that's the only thing I didn't really pick up. Gauntlet. But, nice. Got it twice and didn't need to. I want to check the top exit because it's a new exit. Which means a new potential transition, and if it is the wrecked ship, I'll do it. So we gotta find where that is. Crade's warehouse, too. Where the heck is that? Because that's probably, that's a one door only thing. Only one door acts as both the entrance and exit to Crade's warehouse. And it's a separate entity from the rest of Brinstar, as we've seen. Weird. Can you break this from the outside? That's neat. Let's see what Spazer is. That's weird. The top exit is the bottom exit. And the, that's so weird. Turn that frown upside down, and well, you end up in the same place anyway, so it doesn't matter what you think. No, that's not true. Is it? I don't know what we're saying. What other stories have I tangently went on? Tangently is not a word, but now it is. And never finished. The Welsh word. I never even said what it is. Yeah, I did. Hedraith or something like that. It's like here, I, T, H. But you have to roll the R. 
But then other pronunciations don't say the H, they say Hirai. But I think you do say the TH. Anybody from Wales? Basically what the word means, wait a minute. Up there, that's a patch too, that's another door, but this... Hmm... I'm not scared, Ridley's not here. I have the suits, I don't have charge beam, that's... I don't have spring ball. Charge and spring ball are the only things that would make this... But there's no reason, we're... Let's just go. I always like coming in the exit, that sounds weird, but I mean... I, that I'm gonna get hurt all because I had to do that extra arm pump to the music But you gotta man. It's like when a, a song is not over yet and you're parked and ready to get out of your car But the song's not over you can't it's against the rules Speaking of spring ball This is why spring balls nice to have for this but yeah, anytime that it dumps you at the exit of Lower Norfair and makes you go through it this way, that's always fun to do. I think this is going fairly well, all things considered. I was nervous about this area randomization, but the worst of it isn't even in a way here. The escape sequence is random. And I don't know where all the doors are. Actually, some of the ones that I've seen, I forget. So why would I store that information? But the word, the Welsh word. It's a deeper meaning similar to homesickness and nostalgia, but those words do not do it justice. It means something like a homesickness for a home that you cannot return to, or that maybe never was. And I think that little caveat to the definition is what makes it even more complicated of an idea, a word, than straight up nostalgia and homesickness. And it encapsulates, it's the idea that it encapsulates everything, the nostalgia, the happiness, and the grief that comes with such feeling, the inability to return to a home of the past, even one that maybe never was. And immediately when I read that definition, I was like, this word is everything that I've been dealing with since I basically got my bachelor's degree and was left to my own devices as an adult. I mean, look at the name, Good Old Days Gaming. I don't know if it's worshipping the past or anything. I would say it more fits the definition of that word. I think I mentioned that in the last seed, how I would love to purchase my childhood home again and be the new dad or whatever. It needs a lot of fixing up, but I would gladly do it if it was at all affordable of an option. But that's the thing, in coinciding with the definition of that, that you cannot go back to or that never was, you can't, because it's... It doesn't take anything greater than a fool to realize that even if you could go back and secure the same place, it wouldn't be the same. Dragon, it's reverse boss order by accident. I don't have grapple. Oh well, I'll shoot his tum tum. I guess it's gonna go deep green, not cherry red. The way that my dad always said when I would watch him cowering in fear. I was the one cowering in fear. Watching my dad fight this boss back in the day. Speaking of deep water fish, I recently saw an article that they discovered a new parasite that doesn't need oxygen to live. Apparently they never discovered anything else that doesn't require oxygen or something. But it's a parasite. It steals the nutrients from salmon, I guess? It's a parasite that lives 
on salmon. And so the salmon's just trying to get by, and here's this parasite being like, no, nah, that's for me, thanks. Imagine reincarnation as a parasite. When you think about microscopic organisms, where you going, pal? Oh, jeez, he's having a crack attack. And no one's... Okay. <laughs> God, he flies from left to right. I don't know. It's crazy. Always liked this boss though. In some ways, it's more fun to fight him like this than doing any of the cheap kills. Even better with limited energy and no suit. Of course, you would have to force the reward to be either high jump, or no, it would have to be gravity suit. And you would have to have high jump beforehand, at least, if not space jump. There we go. Kind of sloppy, but look at that, two energy worth of damage. It's funny how easy they are these days, but the first time, nothing ever feels like the first time, dude. There's that word again, spring ball. What a fitting place to get that because we're in Lower Norfair, keep in mind. I like it, they're putting stuff almost as if it was a Plando. But it's not, and the proof of that will be the credits when it tells you the settings. Remember, it always shows the statistics and what was used. If it's a Plando, it says settings Plando. But it'll say, I guess, medium. Actually, one of them is going to say fast, because remember I said... I said progression speed fast. It's probably going to show that in the credits. Oh crap, I don't have high jump. Wait a minute, this is weird. Crap. Okay. I don't think the next jump is as high. I think we should be good. She's so high above me. And so lovely. So, the question still remains, where the heck is the wrecked ship, or Crade's warehouse? Well, there's the exit, the Meridia exit, I didn't check, since they removed the green hatch and opened up the passage, so it's non-crumble blocks. That's, what else haven't I checked? That's an area door. Uh... This? No, because this place, it's actually Ridley's head. We did see that. I don't remember what door dumped out. No, it was the, it was the crab room, right? Speaking of, though, I have energy. Uh, it's probably not worth it, but let's do it. Lava diving. I'm curious. We can see the Mickey Mouse room. And maybe even fight What's-His-Face. Who would have thought that even after learning this is not how you exit Lower Norfair that I would be doing it again anyway. I still don't know how, as a kid, I did not know- Like, how does the screen not scroll when you hold left? How did it- I not notice that? I don't know. There's high jump! Now, what truly am I missing? Grapple beam? Uh, let's go down. This room is always nuts. It's nice to see it every now and again. This is one of those examples of classic 2D texture that I just love. I love the purple bricks that are glowing. I like the pipes that outline it. Every little bit about it. It's awesome. And the bird statues in here. It just has that final area feel to it that only Metroid can do for some reason. 
Something about Metroid final areas. The decoration. Also, can I just go the bottom way? That's not what I wanted to do. Ah, oh, crap. No, that's right. That thing, I always have that idea, and then I see that hatch, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I can't do that trick. I guess the next thing would be to do one of these area randomizations, but make sure that the layout patches are not a thing. Uh, I should save first, because my energy kind of sucks now. I also don't have charge beam. He sidesteps the missiles. He catches every other super. I don't know if I have enough ammo to kill Gold Terizo, actually. Without charge beam. Never mind the energy being kind of frightening. Assuming I just stand there and body everything. But we could at least get the first item. The problem is... Well, what am I missing? I have Ice Beam, it's just turned off. A hundred missiles is enough to break the Zebatites. Charge Beam, that's the problem. Because let's just assume I exhaust all 100 missiles somehow in turn. And on Mother Brain 1. Mother Brain 2 is 55 supers. Yeah, that's plenty. That should be plenty to get her into its missiles. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think I could do it. With only 30 supers. No charge beam. He sidesteps every missile, it's guaranteed. I don't think... Because there's no way to fill your ammo, there's only the crystal flash for energy. Whatever, I'm gonna forego it. I hope charge beam's not in that room, or in screw attack. I guess this is the thing about randomizers versus plandos. With a plando, you know exactly where it is and you don't hesitate. But then again, that's also kind of the exciting part of the randomizer, is that not knowing and taking those risks. I mean, I did save, so taking the risk, maybe I should have just taken the risk. Well, whatever. I just did the mental math, sort of, the guesstimate in my head. 55 supers, if having nothing else, should be enough to beat Mother Brain. I think. But I don't know. So this was the blue side hopper room, right? Yes. I remembered one of them. Holy crap. And we cleared this area out, except for the Shine Spark uh, shaft. Which we gotta pass through it anyway, so why not? We'll get whatever that is. Then there's the gauntlet. We beat Bomb Terizo. It's really all down to the doors. I gotta find where the heck is the wrecked ship. We beat Meridia. Although... Meridia, Plasma, and Spring Ball. Actually, that's gonna be part of the video I cut out, I think. Um, Ice. But remember how I was saying, I'll see you when I'm back here. After going through that first sand pit. Missiles, okay. Well, before I made my way back up to that room, I briefly checked in on the right side down there that does lead to Spring Ball. And I realized I didn't have Grapple Beam to break the, bro the block. That's the thing. Where the heck is Grapple Beam? It's not really necessary unless that Spring Ball location is something. I know there's that clip you can do in the next room, but I was never good at that. The Ice Beam clip on the Poyo, I think it's called. 
I think I did that once too. There was a time several years ago now, probably like seven, seven to ten years ago. Where I was actually playing vanilla Super Metroid and trying to do my own little speedrun of it. Definitely not the caliber of what exists, even back then, let alone today. And I was trying to learn some of the tricks, and I think that's one I did practice enough to at least get it a couple times. But I definitely forget how to do it now. I would have to look it up again and practice it. But all the tricks in this game, well, not all of them. I would say most of them, all it is is a watch a video and then try to replicate a thing and just practice from there. Like, it's not really too complicated of a thing. But all right, we got the two missiles in the energy tank here, whatever they may be. Stupid. You can't do that, grab me mid-screw attack. Yeah, that hit rife word. I like it, man. I actually did have a dream about my childhood last night. Oh, I guess... Dreaming is weird. I think I'm more... by the fact that it's your brain trying to make sense of whatever most recently went on in the day. I think there's really much more meaning to dreams than that. Two missiles? That's the standard! Oh well. I'll take it. Now that definitely ensures ammo for Mother Brain. Speaking of, okay wait, did I check this? Yeah, it's pink on the map. Oh, are we dumb? Yes. That's the thing, though. That's the thing about Metroid Fusion and Zero Mission. Mission. The map is nice, yes, but the map is also inconclusive. Like, the majority of the stuff is hidden in that game and never shows up on the map. Unlike... Oh, yeah. That's where that led. Yeah, unlike this game, everything is eventually shown. Well, I guess it is in that game, too. It's just green. I don't know. There's something different about it. This game's area's... Wait, we can... Crocomire's area. Yeah! Okay. I don't know. I feel like this game is more big pasted chunks. It's like the difference... The difference between going from Super Metroid to Metroid Fusion and Zero Mission is Super Metroid is the Duplo blocks, whereas those two Game Boy Advance games are Legos. That's the difference, I think. The areas of this game are very big, very straightforward, and you can clearly see where stuff is. But on the Game Boy Advance, it's like some of those Shine Spark puzzles in those games are absolutely absurd. Like, how are you ever supposed to figure it out? Even a, a seasoned Metroid veteran who knows how to sniff out for little hidden nooks and crannies. I still think it even goes beyond that in terms of absurd locations and things that you have to pull off. That said, if you've been following this channel for a while now, you've know I did a 100% playthrough of Metroid Fusion, and Metroid Fusion is my second favorite Metroid of all time behind this one. And that is the reason why I do want to play Zero Mission, because I think I'm missing something. Then again, I also think we face a problem where... ...the time may just be passed. I always gotta do the Crocomire dance. Okay. I want to do an aerial shine spark. You press up to cancel, right? And then, whoops. Well, we gotta open the door first anyway. I used to be so good at this. I guess I can't say that. No, too high. If I was really so good, it would come back to me like riding a bike, would it not? Yeah, I give up. 
I just wanted to do it for the fanciness of it. But yeah, the zero mission thing, I feel like now going and playing it for the first time, I don't think it has the potential to be amazing. That's like anything, like telling a younger person, oh, you gotta play Super Mario RPG or Super Metroid or Link to the Past. To somebody who didn't grow up with it and has seen so many other more complex games today, how deeply can they truly appreciate and enjoy those games beyond just enjoying it at like a basic level, I guess. I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say? How almost like the novelty of it is too old. Not to experience it for the first time now. Spazer, well, we gotta turn that off. And ice too, because it slows us down too much. Kind of hitting a wall here. I gotta find a door. Let's think. What door haven't I gone to? That one I was saying, right past the Meridia tube. Is there anything in Upper Norfair? The exit. I think they patched that too, so the Lower Norfair exit door you can actually enter. Normally there's crumble blocks and there's no possible way to get to that door from over here. Also, wait a minute, there's still a pickup. An ice beam. Wait. I always hate that. Maybe that is the benefit of doing the mock ball to ice beam. Because when you do all the Crocomire stuff and then you're just curious about the missiles under ice beam that lead to Crocomire, there's no other way. You have to go back to Crocomire. It's kind of a waste of time. That seems to be super missiles every time anymore. Just a coincidence, I suppose. Now, what is... I don't remember at the top of the elevator here where they led it to. But yeah, that 100% playthrough that I watched of Zero Mission. Like, once he beat the original NES Metroid portion and got the fully powered suit and then was just backtracking for 100% pickups, it was kind of like the. It was even worse than my reaction to seeing 100% Metroid Fusion for the first time. In terms of just the obscurity of some of those pickup locations and the shine spark maneuvers needed to do it. It's awesome, yes, but just the baffling, like, how do they expect you to realize that they're, I don't know. <laughs> but NES Metroid has the same kind of thing. Man, all this energy, Mother Brain's gonna take like nine years. At least two laser blasts. I think that's the problem with why even the original Metroid is hard to go back to. In addition to the fact that it doesn't have a map to look to. So if you didn't grow up and memorize it, it's very hard to remember where the heck you are in that game. And I feel like Zero Mission is very similar. If I mean, not just because it is a remake of the first Metroid with some added material. I don't know, it's, I wouldn't say it's bad game design, but it's definitely tricky. What did this dump out to? This is Red Brinstar. Uh. And what was this? Green Hill Zone. Did I check the door? Hang on. 
Red Brinstar exit, which is the Meridia exit. We did do the Meridia exit, and that dumped out at the bottom Meridia exit, above the glass tube. So we haven't technically seen what this door was, and they patched it. This thing, look at it, it's open already. They removed the hatch. Upper Norfair, Lower Norfair exit. So that's useless. Well, at least now we know that's one less door. And since we're here... Speaking of the glass tube... Wait a minute, even before the glass tube, though... The moat. The key hunter door that normally leads to Red Brinstar Elevator, however, before that... I am more curious. Well, there's this, too. Hang on. This is becoming now a very slow 100% pickup. That was my fear, kind of, but I expected it. Whenever you shuffle my memory around and throw it for a loop like this, of course it's going to take longer than the average seed. Still do not have normal bombs. I mean, you don't need them in this game, but that's a thing, too. So, yeah, we'll check the Meridia exit that normally leads to the Meridia map room or that little entrance way where the map room is. We'll check that, and then if that fails, we'll check the Key Hunter South room that leads to Red Prince Star Elevator normally by crossing over the moat. Yes, I think those are like the only two exits and entrances that I can think of. Because we checked this door, this next door. Wait, no. This room. We checked the door right there, but the one up top is something too. If I could just get up there. There we go. Removed that hatch. That's the thing I was starting to say before, too. Even if you turned off that feature, this is Meridia. Top of Meridia elevator. Plasma beam. Still can't check Spring Ball, though. I'll go to the plasma room. I don't know why. If for nothing else but maybe charge beam. Another room of this game you barely ever see anymore these days. I remember the first time, though, I passed through this area a ton. I was completely lost. I guess in a way, Meridia is complicated your first time. With how it limits your movement through it. Not because of the water, I mean, just like that door is normally locked until Dragon's defeated. And you're forced to ride that tube. Alright. If this isn't charge beam... What am I forgetting? There's the wrecked ship entrance and the long road that nobody definitely ever takes. The maze room that normally leads to this elevator. But we need to find that exit before we can even check either one. So the Key Hunter room, that's the only one, the one right after the moat. Instead of going to Samus' ship, go down. That's the only thing I can think of. Still can't check Spring Ball, there's no point going anywhere else. We should just go back to the elevator. Grabbed. Okay. I want to say I've checked every other possible door up to this point. That is normally an area transition. Oh well. 
That's the plan of action. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, what thoughts have I brought up and not finished? Oh, no, there's probably several. I am gonna, I think, try to record Zero Mission, though. I just can't promise when it'll be done. This led to what again? Lower North, that's a long way around things. That escape sequence, man, wherever it dumps out, I might be in for some trouble, especially if, like whatever time it gives me. We know that leads to the top of Maria, so that's useless. We, have, we gotta go to the Key Hunter room, so we'll just back up through this way. It just makes me wonder, though, if I grew up with Metroid Zero Mission and not just Metroid Fusion. Like, obviously, this is the Metroid that I grew up with the most. I watched my dad play the NES game, but I never could make any headway in that game myself. But this one I eventually learned, and it's the best thing ever. This is the door. Where is this? There it is! This leads to the wrecked ship, finally! That was the missing puzzle piece. And now, this room that you never go in. Aha, up here. I discovered the lassie that the way to this door right here is not bad, but yeah, this is it. Leaving from this door, this room is really weird. Isn't it just right up here? I see that block over there, that's what you hop into to get here. So on the way to this other door, you do have to go through the maze? This is where the x-ray scope would actually come in handy. Wait. Yeah, that's right. Okay. We'll get there. Well, you know what this means, though? We have to use our process of elimination here. We have to come back to this door. Because the only other exit from this area, this is technically the wrecked ship, even though it's criteria at the moment. The wrecked ship only has one other area transition, and that's the door that normally connects to the moat, where you would begin ocean fly and shine spark your way to the wrecked ship. And by process of elimination, assuming I'm not forgetting anything, I'm willing to bet that that door leads to Kraid's warehouse. Because what else could it be at this point? So that means this is the final two bosses in this little tightly woven area. And then, once we do that, we have to go to the green Brinstar elevator to get to the gold statue. Okay, I feel slightly more prepared, not really, for the escape sequence. But I feel like I've got these transitions relatively memorized at the moment. Still no regular bombs, still no charge beam. Then again, there are a lot of pickups here. That was way too early. Alright, Fantoon, are you Craig? Well, actually, if it is Fantoon, then that is reverse boss order by accident. And it is. Nice hot pink flames, though. This is gonna be nothing, man. If only I could charge up Plasma, though, he'd be done in two seconds.
This is another thing I have to learn, though. There's a way to manipulate his movement and just rain tons of missiles down on him and destroy him. I, I could never really fight this fight quickly. So we'll just do what we can. So I've got the Let's Play Agent Under Fire either about to come out, going on right now, or it just finished up depending on when this video goes out. I haven't decided when I'm posting it yet. And the plan originally was I was going to do either Nightfire or everything or nothing, both also for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox. Actually, I don't think everything or nothing was on all the three. Either way, that was the plan, and I did start to play both games, but the controls, man. Keep in mind that neither of those two games, only Agent Under Fire did I have as a teenager, I guess, and therefore quote-unquote grew up with. And only Agent Under Fire retains the control scheme that is most like GoldenEye and Perfect Dark in terms of the sticks. That's always the problem with every first-person shooter is the analog sticks. Whenever everything went modern, I know GoldenEye had the control scheme and so did Perfect Dark, obviously. But 1.1 Honey. That's what I know. I think most people do 1.2 Solitaire, right? Or one of them. Like that. Whatever the control schemes were called. And Nightfire. There we go. Finish him off with a super. Nightfire does the control sticks way different, which makes no sense to me because it's made by the same people as Agent Under Fire, but they force the sticks to behave a different way, and no control scheme. Well, th see, that's the thing. There are control schemes that would be doable to me, but then they go and remap the buttons unnecessarily, and that, I don't know. I spent like two hours playing the first real on-foot stage, I guess, of Nightfire, and I was desperately trying to get a grip of it, and I just could not. I couldn't play it. I was staring at the ground, staring at the wall, not able to turn the way that I wanted to, and so good intentions got left behind just solely based on the ability. I just can't control that game, and it's, it takes too much time. That's the thing. The idea was to get it out before, or finish recording it at least, before I went away on my trip. And when, as soon as I realized that I couldn't get a grip on the controls and learn the game enough to do it, I said, screw it, there's not enough time to master this learning curve and then play well enough. That's the thing, like, I can't, I can't play a game if I can't play it at least semi-decently. Unless I explicitly say this is blind and I'm terrible, so bear with me. But I feel like that's unwatchable in most cases. And again, that might be zero mission. In Everything or Nothing, the intro song to that, I like it because it feels like a Bond movie. Although, out of all the Bond games that I've never played, the one I want to play the most is Bloodstone on Xbox 360 and PC. And due to licensing issues and crap, like, you can't find that game anywhere. And I don't have a 360. And I don't really have a good gaming PC either, even though now I guess technically it claims that it could be, but... You can't get it anyway, it's not on Steam or anything. But yeah, I think that's... If you're gonna go with a third-person James Bond, I think Bloodstone. I remember I watched... I don't know if it was a long play, I think it was one of those ones where they cut it so that it is more like a movie. Charge beam! There it is, thank God! That, we're done here, dude. It's over. We just gotta get to that elevator. Actually, wait a second. This leads to bowling and all that reserve tank business, and then eventually... Gravity? I don't care. We know Crade has to be around the corner, his warehouse, and if it is going to be Crade, we've... The door right down here. There's a dump out block, let's just get on with it. Yes. And right here, right? Yeah! Crade? 
Mm-hmm. I, th I think I literally checked every possible area transition door at this point. So we'll whoop Kraid. This is crazy. It's like Kraid and Fantoon in their little co own corner. And we gotta go the long way back just to get to that. That's gonna take a while to get to that elevator. Jeez. Which makes me wonder, where the heck is the escape gonna dump out at? One of the map rooms. I'm trying to think which map room would be the most arduous. But I can't, because I can't really wrap my head around... Until I see it on screen, I can't be like, okay, where does that door lead to again? Like, I need to see it first before I can think about it, if that makes any sense. But Crate is gonna be a joke. As he always is when he's the end boss. Those cheeks again, man, look at him. I'm loving this blue and green, dude. My two favorite colors all meshed together as one. With the backtrack, or the backdrop of black. Wait a minute, why am I not charging plasma? I forgot I had that. Oh, he... That seems to happen every other fight. He doesn't flash. Like he's about to open his mouth, and then I get hit by something and fall down. Whatever, it's done. What were you holding there, dear sir? Energy tank. We have every energy tank in the game. Do we also have- I think we have at least three reserve tanks. Definitely two. Well, Mother Brain's gonna take a century and a half. And by that, I mean probably one minute longer than usual. Might as well round up. Because that's how you round. Actually, speaking of huge numbers, I just recently found out that in a town, like two towns over from me... Uh, hey, there's regular bombs. What a spot for them. But yeah, there was a... $500,000, or was it $5 million? No, scratch-off stuff. It was a scratch-off ticket. Two towns, sold two towns from where I live. That had like $500,000 or something. I was like, dang it. Could you imagine the things? But yeah, everything or nothing, that 007 game. I like that John Cleese does his voice. Uh, Judy Dench is back again. And Pierce Brosnan, it's the only game that Pierce Brosnan lended his voice to. So it has that going for it. And it did seem relatively neat, but actually... I was watching a playthrough of that game too, and I couldn't finish it. There, some of the levels midway through lost my entrance, interest. But, uh... I don't know why exactly? Bits of it seemed cumbersome, and I did play it, and that was another one where it took a minute to learn the controls relatively. And of course, I did not master them at all, I just gave myself about an hour or so practicing a couple stages. And I was trying to play on one of the harder difficulties. Actually, I think it was on Agent, not even Double O Agent. And I was trying to watch a video and then play it myself and try to do what the guy in the video did. But it's hard. That game is a lot harder than I expected it to be, and again, because I haven't grown up with it, and I was going in mostly blind, just trying to make it look like I knew what I was doing. And just once again, it's the, the time it would take to learn it and be well enough at it. It's just not possible to do before my trip. So unfortunately, the 007 content I wanted to do leading up to No Time to Die being released in the movie theaters. It's limited to just Agent Under Fire. I can see how... I, I don't understand, though. People seem to think Nightfire's the best one. But the voices in that game are terrible. But I do see some of the stages. There was that one stage where you're infiltrating some office at night. That was a really cool stage. And some of the car stages. That's the thing. Those Bond games, the EA Bond games. 
the car stages are the best part of it, because it, it gives you something GoldenEye didn't have, which is the action stages that feel like a Bond movie. Also, why didn't that shine so hard more? Uh, this is not the Golden Four. This is Meridia. Wait a minute. Long ago, we dumped out down here, but I can't remember what it was. What is this? Perfect! It's a long way! But I will run through all of Brinstar just to get to the elevator. It's fine by me. So we're done, we're done, we're at the end here. We're headed to the elevator, which is gonna lead to the Golden Four, which is Torian, and then it's just the escape sequence. Which is a mystery that might be somewhat difficult. There's two variables there. First, we don't know how much time it's gonna give me to escape. Although it even, there is an, there is even a note on the website that says, in nearly every seed, the time is generous meaning they give you a lot of extra time to get there. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get that. But even still, there's a lot of doors in this mess that I already forget. The wrecked ship would probably be the most annoying map room. I uh, gotta get Ice Beam back on. Because, yeah, we know the wrecked ship is secluded in its own little dead-end corner because it connects to Kraid's warehouse, therefore does not loop to the rest of the planet. So that probably is the longest map station, if I had to guess. Upper Norfair map station would be... I don't know, I can't remember. I, see, that's the thing. I don't remember what the two doors at the top of the Norfair elevator led to already. Meridia map room. That might be tricky, too. I don't know, I can't remember. Can't wrap my head around it. It feels so good flying through these Metroid rooms every time. You know, speaking of the James Bond games, too, uh, I know there's a Quantum of Solace game, but that's one I never really looked into. I know it's first person, not third person. But I don't know how good it is. What color is the baby Metroid? A really cool blue-green! Alright, freshly saved! All the baby business is done, let's do it. The end of the game is the end of the road for you, Bob. Anytime I talk like that, it instantly reminds me of the intro to Chicago from Time Splitters 2. Chicago. And I've had a belly full of it. That's a great phrase. Big nose and braces. Come on, you stupid. I want that son of a. I want him dead, you hear me? Dead. Dead. Yeah. We'll see about that. But from now on, Big, you better watch the shadows. Because I'm taking you down. Perhaps sad in a way that I kind of remember that still. True, she said with a brain. How does that feel right in the eye? Wait, why am I dodging? I need to take all the damage to make this fight last a little bit shorter. Show me. See, that's the thing about scary things in life. None of them are actually really that scary when you think about it. Creatures and that, because they just make dumb noises. It's the grotesqueness. I gotta get them all off! I will shoot them all before you laser! 
Well, darn, I missed. The damaged baby looks like a normal Metroid. It also reminds me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Tur Turtle colors, namely Raphael. Toidles. Toidles soup for you. That's right, summoning the powers from the core. It is weird that she has basically a laser gun. Remember laser tag? It's still around. I think I've only ever done a proper laser tag thing where most everybody gets a vest in a thing and you go in a dark room and it's crazy for like, I don't know, not even five minutes probably you're in there. I think I only did that once. Alright, what's the time? 6.15. That's a nice chunk. So we know this is vanilla. Everything Torian is vanilla, it's just when it dumps out at the shaft. What the heck, D-pad angling down when I didn't even press it? What? What is happening here? I am sucking, I am sucking. Seriously! Okay. Let the frustration subside. I don't know what's going on here. I am sucking. I am sucking. Red Hot Chili Peppers, dude. Can't stop an other side. Those songs never get old to me. Other side, especially that uh, that final chorus, the bass embellishments, the John Fushante backup vocals, all of it. Where are we? Upper North Air. What does that mean? Uh, well, we know it's one of these two doors. Unless we, we could go to Ridley's headroom. Left first, because it's the easiest. What is this? Red Brinstar. That leads to the moat, which doesn't lead to anything. Let's just try the other side. Crade's warehouse is... Uh, that's a dead end. Crap, 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 crap. I don't know what to do. Red Brinstar. Red Brinstar exit was Upper North Air. But the moat, the moat bottom goes to the wreck ship, which is a dead end. The glass tube goes to the top of Meridia. Uh... Where is anything criteria that is not the wrecked ship? Wait, where did... Wait a minute, it's easy, the moat! We know this is the moat, that's it! The ship's right here! Okay, it's not as extreme as I thought. Just don't go down. I am stupid, I am stupid. Wow, that was six minutes for that! Why is everything flickering? That was frightening for a second. I really had no idea where I was going. But then it just became very clear. Well, there you go. The first official randomizer that randomized the areas, and I had no idea where I was going. That really wasn't that bad. Definitely took a lot longer, though. That's the thing. Not that it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just... With Super, Super Metroid, you always want to go fast. Actually, speaking of, what is my time? We still probably got Bikini Samus. Right, it's under three hours in this game, or is it under two? 128, ugh. Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. That was like 40 minutes slower than the previous seat I played. But that's to be expected when the areas are all shuffled around on you and you have no idea where they are. Kenji Yamoto, he's so good, do you name him twice? 
Yamamoto. Yamamoto too. I don't even know what that means. Kuchi Abe. Probably don't even say Abe. Dan Osen and George Seinfeld. I remember that George, I guess it's Sinfeld. No, it would be Seinfeld. I was like, hey, look, it's from the show, but it's Jerry Seinfeld, George Costanza. Even still, that's every time I've seen that name, that's what I thought. And there he is, may he rest in peace. Gumpei Yokoi, that is. Dude and Flaw. Rand, uh oh. Yes. There, see, there we go. Progression speed fast, difficulty normal, morph placement normal, and all those other special things. I should mess with them sometime. I think it makes it harder. Like, super fun movement is not actually super fun, it's harder. Which maybe it is more fun that way, I don't know. But that's proof that this is not a plandomizer, the fact that it listed all those settings, normal and fast and whatnot. Sing a song in Norfair. 32 minutes. The pause menu. Got 21 seconds of love. No special beams. Well, I didn't have charge attack for like nine years. I don't know why everything is nine years to me. It's been five bombs since you looked at me. Five bombs. I can't remember any instance I even used one bomb. I know where I found them. I was like seeing these words cut off. Sometimes it's funny. Like that one scene where it was like, side hoe. Yeah, look at that, an hour and 47 minutes. Dear Lord. That's too long. There's a sprite that looks like you can play as Samus in this game, in her black bikini, but it's not. It's normal Samus, the only thing different is the Crystal Flash animation is slightly altered. So it's kind of deceiving, because I would love to play as that Samus right there. Look at her. Those calves, dude. Those abs. And the shoulders. But that is, at the moment, not possible. That was probably nearly 100%, but, yeah, well, you know, 92. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching, you guys. I might move on to Zero Mission. I don't know.